In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ, God's love incarnate, is the great mystery that always remains a mystery to us. The closer we come to understanding God, the more mystified we are that God is for us. To be a Christian, to be in love with the grand mystery who is God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The mystery of God is not a problem to be solved, a question to be answered, but rather a relationship to be enjoyed. The Feast of the Transfiguration discloses to us the reality of the world beyond our walls. Christians have many reminders of the fact that the church here on earth is only part of God's great symphony of life. <clears throat> At every celebration of the Holy Communion, we are placed in the presence of angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven. But as for our spiritual foes, they that are with us are more than they be with them. What a tremendous power God has given us as we reflect upon the saints who have come out of the great tribulation and have washed their robes and served God day and night in God's temple. As we meditate upon figures like Moses and Elijah and recall the awful troubles that they endured for the Almighty. How petty and inconsequential are our light afflictions and how poorly we bear them. Yet the holy ones of old are on our side and the same strength that sustained them can sustain us. The church prays on this feast day that her children may be delivered from the disquietude of this world, a world that has the power to afflict, to torment, to bruise the children of God, but cannot ruffle their peace. We need never be alone. Whatever we have to say about today's text, the transfiguration of Jesus on the mountain, can we all agree that it is a very strange, very mysterious story? In our first lesson, we see Moses going up to the mountain, and God reveals God's way to Moses. At last, the distant God comes close and speaks at last the veil is lifted and there is straight, direct access from God to man. And of course, this passage from Exodus sets the tone for the gospel reading. Jesus led Peter, James, and John, his inner circle, the leadership among the disciples, up a high mountain and there they served as witnesses according to Mosaic law. And there, wonder of wonders, as Peter was speaking, God's voice from heaven spoke, this is my son, the beloved, 
with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. God speaks and reveals. The disciples are moved from wonderment and awe and fear. They fell to the ground and cringed in fear. Jesus observed the fear and surprise of his disciples. They, he came to them, touched them, and said, do not be afraid. When they arose, they saw no one but Jesus himself alone. Is this story of the transfiguration a kind of parable for sometimes how it is here in the church's worship? We meet. We converse with God, we listen, and sometimes by the grace of God, there is a voice, a revelation. The living God speaks to us, reveals, <coughs> intrudes. Yet always in the speaking, even amid revelation, there is always the mystery. And we can never hope to explain such moments. And even if we hear the voice clearly, there is a sense in which the closer we come to God, the more distant God seems to us. Well, this is transfiguration. You heard the story of Jesus miraculously transformed before his befuddled disciples on the mountaintop. Do you really think I have an exploration for that? Well, I don't. So far in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus has been patiently teaching his disciples explaining to them the nature and reign of God. Sometimes he's been using parables, but rarely do these parables seem to help them understand anything more clearly. In fact, sometimes the parables seem to confuse them all the more. And as we heard, Jesus takes his disciples up the mountain as if to take them to a higher level. And there, Jesus does not teach. He does not explain anything. In fact, he confuses them all the more. He is transfigured before them. His garments glisten. There is a light from heaven and a voice from God. Moses and Elijah come back from the dead and appear before them. It's all very, very confusing. You may say, what does this story mean? How can we use it in our daily lives? And how are we to make sense of this story? Well, what if I can't explain it to you? What if, and I think this is the point I'm trying to make, what if I don't attempt to explain it to you? Remember, the mystery of God is not a problem to be solved, a question to be answered, but rather a relationship to be enjoyed. What if this strange story of Jesus transfigured on the mountaintop is itself a kind of parable of Jesus? 
What if this episode is not meant to explain Jesus, but to point to Jesus? What if this is more like a picture that we're to look and be encountered by rather than some problem we are to solve? The transfiguration is a kind of parable of us here at service this morning. Jesus came to us and was a shining, pure light, but the darkness comprehended it not. The darkness, our darkness, just couldn't figure Jesus out. We couldn't comprehend God coming to us as a crucified Savior. The transfiguration shows us Jesus Christ as he is, was, and always shall be. King of kings and Lord of lords. Jesus, the power of God very God of very God. That we fully couldn't comprehend, explain, or figure him out is in a way a confirmation of his divinity. Jesus befuddled us, confused us, not only on the Mount of Transfiguration, but when he ate with and welcome sinners. And when he died for us, sinners. When he showed us a way that is not our way, we just couldn't comprehend him. And we still can't. Thanks be to God.